What's up everyone, and today I'm doing a deck profile on my Marine Cess. Now, usually I just do the main deck and the extra deck, you don't really cover a side deck in my deck profiles, but since I actually went X1, not once, not twice, but actually three times with it, which just goes to show the power of Marine Cess, I figured, why not? Now, like I said before, I've topped three times with this, honestly. When I first uh, picked up this deck, I expected to go like uh, X2, something like that. But no, this just kept winning and kept winning. And I haven't really had really a bad record with this deck just because it's so good. It's even gotten wins against a lot of the best decks. Like I beat Despia, Flundry, Sword Soul, multiple times at that. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. First, I run three Blue Tang. Blue Tang is essentially the main card of this deck, the, the the best starter, essentially. Whenever it is normal or special summoned, you can foolish one of your Marine Cess monsters from your deck to your grave, which is really good because multiple Marine Cess have effect in the grave. Some of them can even spell summon themselves from the grave. And when it's sent to the graveyard by the Link Summon, or when it's yeah, sent to the graveyard for the Link Summon of a water monster, you can activate the top three cards of your deck. And if you do, add one activated Marine Cess card from your deck to your. Uh, add one activated Marine Cess card and shuffle the rest back into the deck. So it's just all around really good. And honestly, just Blue Tang by itself it can be a one card starter in this deck, essentially. I run the three Marine Cess Seahorse. This is kind of the card you usually send off of the Blue Tang. But if you already have it in hand, you don't need to, and you could just send something else like Mandarin. Or even Pascalus. Z-Horse, like Blue Tang, can also be a one card starter, because whenever... Essentially, you can special summon this to his own a Marine Cess monster. Marine Cess Link monster points to. And if it's in the graveyard, except for the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can special summon a Marine Cess monster from your hand. Although you have to banish this for cost, which... Isn't really too bad of material, because you can get banished stuff back. Although in a roundabout way. So like a daily, if you open these two cards in your hand, you're going to have a pretty good board. Because you could just go Blue Tang, Blue Tang into, uh, into Blue Slug, uh, full, of sea, full of Seahorse, uh, then go into, to grab, and then grab Seahorse back. I'll show the combo. I actually am going to do like a combo and test hand sort of thing. Next, I run three of one of the new cards, Spring Girl. Spring Girl is essentially Aqua Spirit, more or less. You can banish one Marine Cess monster from your graveyard to spell summon this card from your hand. And as an additional effect, to you can send cards from the top of your deck equal to the number of Marine Cess monsters you control, and that's when it's Link Summoned, kind of like how Blue Tang has an effect when it's uh, linked away. And uh, you burn your opponent 200 for each Marine Cess card. So let's say I foolish, or I excavate two to the grave, and uh, it's two Marine Cess monsters. I just burned my points for 200. So like, you do have a in time option with this deck, which is pretty good. Next, I run the one Pascalus. Originally, and I think on my like my last profile or something like that, I had it at three. But after I uh, kind of experimented with this card, it just kind of I realized a problem with Pascalus. Sure, if you open it, it's nice. But if you normal Pascalus and then your opponent uh, imperms or veilers it, your plays kind of end there. Unlike Blue Tank or Seahorse, where you're going to have some sort of a, kind of way to extend with it. So I kind of cut it down to one, and if I can, you know, use it, that's nice. I can, like, uh, send it off the grave, send it to the grave off of the Blue Tank Summon, and then summon it back with something like Coral Anatomy, because by that point, they're probably going to have, have hand trapped something. So Pascalus can just resolve, and then you can go into your Bahamut Shark and totally awesome. Because. Level 4, level 4, and Blue Tang is also level 4. I also run the 1, Marine Cess Mandarin. Mandarin, if you control uh, two more Marine Cess monsters, you spell some of this card from your hand or greater to his own uh, water link monster points to. So it can be an extender of ways. Only run it at 1 because you can also send out the Blue Tang. And it's not really like the most ideal play, but you know, it's always going to be an extender. Sometimes it comes up, sometimes it doesn't. Also run one Marine Cess Sleepy Maiden. We also run the one Sleepy Maiden, which is another new card. Sleepy Maiden, you can essentially target one monster control, a special summon Sleepy Maiden from your hand. And if you do, the card you target becomes 
cannot be destroyed by opponent's card effects. That's the one thing with this deck, it's a lot of protection. And Sleep Marine has an additional effect to when it's in the graveyard, you can banish it. Target one Link Monster, equip one Link Monster from your grave to it. So it kind of has a similar effect as the Field Spell. So if you don't happen to, let's say your Blue Slug gets, not your Blue Slug, uh, your Sea Angel gets sashed or something like that, and you can't act, act your uh, Field Spell, then you still have Sleep Main and you still have some sort of plays. Next, I run the two Swap Frog, as well as the one Ronin Tone, having a little uh, frog engine. Considering most of the Marine Sess Link Monsters, except for Blue Slug or Sea Angel, only need two Water Monsters and not Marine Sess Monsters, so you can use them for Link Climbing, you can use them to go into Totally Awesome, you can use them for multiple plays, or you can even use Swap Frog to get some of your Marine Sess Monsters that you want in the hand into the grave, like maybe the Sleepy Angel, Mandarin would work, so it's pretty versatile. For hand traps, I run three Droll and Lockbird, two Effect Veiler, and three DD Crow. I don't run Ash because honestly I feel like Droll and Lock is just way better because most uh, modern decks I feel add like a, the only search monster, or yeah, <clears throat> they'll like do probably like maybe five to seven searches a turn, whether it be by adding or by drawing. And with Draw and Lockbird, that can just set, shut that down instantly. For example, like let's say uh, Sword Soul, the uh, first thing they do is they activate Pod Desires. That's going to limit them quite a bit. Effect Veiler is really good against uh, Flounderies, especially, and DD Crow is good against sometimes Sword Soul, but also against stuff like Despia. Also, run one Nibiru, but you'll probably see as to why I run that in a bit. Moving on to the spells. I run three Marine Sestai, obviously the best new card out of uh, Duels from the Deep. Well, at least for Marine Sest anyway. You can activate one of these effects and for the rest of this turn, after this card, you can also spell some monsters like for water, which is fine because your extract is entirely water based. So, no problem with that. You can target one non link Marine Sest monster to your graveyard, spell to summon it, or if Marine Sest spell ocean is in your field zone, spell to summon one Marine Sest monster from your deck. So, depending on if Battle Ocean is on the field or not, is depending on which effect is yeah, which effect you're going to activate. So, yeah, it's either a monster reborn or a special from the deck. Of course, I run the one Marine Sess Battle Ocean. Battle Ocean is definitely very important for this deck, which is one thing I've noticed. The fact that Battle Ocean can essentially make your monsters immune to card effects is just definitely been winning a lot of games on its own. So essentially. All Marine Sets monsters you control gain 200 attack, and also they gain 600 attack for each Marine Sets card equipped to it. And uh, this card can equip up to 3, so essentially, if this effect resolves, you can uh, boost your monster by 2000 attack, and if it was things someone using Crystal Heart in the extra monster zone, it becomes unaffected as well. So definitely really good. Also on 3 Sign at Mining. Cyber mining can help you search, obviously, your cybers, but the Marine Sets are cybers for some strange reason. You know, they're not aqua, they're not a fish or sea serpent, they're cybers. Doesn't really make much sense, but, you know, it works. And it can also be used as ash bait. So, for example, whenever you activate a sign at mining, most oftentimes your opponent is going to use ash on it, so that can allow your other plays to go through without having to worry about an ash. Now next, I run the two Pot of Desires and two Pot of Ivers. Desires, banished hand, draw two. Pretty simple. But one thing I noticed about this deck is that you go through your extra deck quite a bit. So if your board gets broken, you're not going to have a whole lot of follow-up. Which is why I run Pot of Ivers to kind of like uh, get some of that resource back so where I can continue to do my plays. So if they break through it, I can just rebuild it back. And the cool thing is you can, with a uh, Seahorse and a uh, Blue Tang, if you open that with Pot of Iris, you got a free Pot of Iris. Because both those are full combos and you can get five monsters into the grave with these. I also run three Crossout Designator. That's, now this is why I run the Nibiru. Most hand traps don't really affect Marine Sess too, ma too much because they either a hand trap in the wrong place or... They hand trap one, but I'm just going to have another play to keep on continuing. So, cross out is helpful for that, but uh, as I showed uh, earlier, I do run the one to beer. 
Nibiru is easily the best hand trap against Marine Cess. It'll just completely destroy our board and our plays. So, after uh, losing two games to uh, Nibiru, I just decided to put three cross out in, as well as the one Cobb Bolly Grave and the one Forbidden Droplet. Moving on to the traps. I run three Imperm and two Marine Cess Waves, so in total I run five Imperms. Because Marine Cess Wave is essentially an Imperm. Because also, like Imperm, it can activate from the hand, although you have to control a Marine Cess Link 3 or higher monster. And it can only activate if you control a Marine Cess Link monster. So it's got its downsides, but obviously it's a really good card, you know, just being another Imperm. And with the new Coral Triangle, it is searchable now, so you can just add a Marine Cess Wave to your hand. Moving on to the extra deck. I run three, Blue Slug. Blue Slug when it's linked summon you can target Marine Cess card in your graveyard or Marine Cess monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand. And the two Sea Angel, when this card is linked summon, you can add one Marine Cess spell from your deck to your hand. Both are definitely really important for uh, your combo piece. Also run the two Marine Cess Coral Anemone. Coral Anemone is really good because you can target one water monster in your graveyard with 1500 or less attack and spells to summon it. And that says Water Monster. If you want to summon Swap Frog, you can summon Swap Frog. Sometimes even next deck monster. So like a, for example Coral Triangle only has 1500 attack so you can even summon that. I run the one Crystal Heart. Crystal Heart's effect really isn't all that important. Now what you really want it for is the Field Spell to where you can essentially make all your mon monsters unaffected. Well, make the what you link someone using Crystal Heart unaffected. So also run the one Coral Triangle which is as I mentioned before the card you use to search Marine Cess Wave. Discard a water monster from your hand to add one Marine Cess Trap from your near deck to your hand. And as an additional effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard, special summon water link monsters from your graveyard whose combined link writings equal exactly three. Now, that last effect didn't really come up too often because I wasn't really ever in a situation that much to where Cold Triangle would happen. Because sometimes I'd go into Cool Triangle, or sometimes I would go into the Marine Cess Marble Rock. And Marble Rock allows you to essentially kind of like the same as the secondary effect of a Coral Anemone, which is, which I forgot to mention, when a Coral Anemone is sent to the graveyard, you can uh, add one Marine Cess card back from your graveyard. Marble Rock can do that too. And the cool thing is that says Marine Cess card. Not necessarily monster, so you can add back the Marine Cess Wave, or if you wanted to, you could add back a Marine Cess Dive. Next, I run the one Aqua Argonaut, which is kind of like the new boss monster of this deck. So the cool thing with the Aqua Argonaut, while this card is in the extra monster zone, your opponent cannot target any other, your opponent cannot attack any other monsters except this one. And uh, as an additional effect, when your opponent activates a spell, trap, or effect, you can uh, spell summon one Marine Cess card equipped to this to negate the activation. And the cool thing is if you use the uh, the Marble Rock, because Marble Rock has an additional effect to where send one Marine Cess monster from your hand to the graveyard. And your and uh, for that battle, your monsters are uh, cannot be destroyed by battle and take no battle damage from that battle. So essentially what they'll do, if you have both these on the field, they'll attack Aqua Argonaut. Then you use Marble Rock's effect to make it to where that can't to where that back is essentially cancelled out. And they're not really going to have much of a follow-up play beyond that. Also on the one, Great Bubble Reef. Bubble Reef has a once per turn effect. During each standby phase, you can banish the water monster from your graveyard to draw one card. And the cool thing is that when every time a monster is banished, you can gain 600 attack. So that's pretty cool. Also on one, Marine Cess Wonder Heart. Marine Cess Wonder Heart is more for like a turn three or going second as opposed to the Aqua Argonaut or the Great Battle Reef because uh, during the battle it can spell summon a Marine Cess monster equipped to it so you can do even more battle damage. Also on the one Splash Mage, essentially Splash Mage can special summon any of these from your grave so really good. Also on the one Bahamo Shark and of course the one Totally Awesome. Sometimes you can make Totally Awesome with the Swap Frog and Ronin Toten, or sometimes you can summon it off of the Bomber Shark. Really depends on which the scenario you have. Moving on to the side. I run three D Barrier. Really good against Sword Soul and Despia. Also run the three Evelyn match for going second. 
Now, the one thing I noticed with this deck, it does pretty well against most decks. With the one exception being Eldritch. To be honest, I have not beaten Eldritch with this deck yet. And that's just because it doesn't really have a lot of main deck spell and trap removal. So, I run the one red reboot, the three cosmic cyclone, three twin twister, and three skullmeister. I'd also run harpies feather duster, but I can't currently find it at the moment. Now, skullmeister is mainly purely for swords, uh, not pure, purely for eldritch, because it can negate the trap effects to banish to get more advantage. So, I side heavy for eldritch because the that's the deck that this deck struggles against the most. That's all for this deck. Let me know in the comments what do you think about Marines. Do you think it's definitely one of the has the potential to be one of the best decks of the format? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video I make. Bye.